recording. Yeah, I would have forgotten that. Um, so it's recording. So um, I, I, I say a warm welcome to everybody who is watching us here on our uh, in our Kreisky uh, Forum digital format. Uh, uh, this we started because of the Corona crisis. You know, everybody or many of you uh, uh, on your computers. Uh, who are watching us or people who are watching us on Facebook Live, uh, they know, uh, most of them, that the Kreisky Forum um, is a place, the think tank in Vienna, in the former living house of the Prime Minister Bruno Kreisky. Um, and usually we do our rallies or our political discussions there. But uh, because of the corona crisis, this isn't possible to uh, talk uh, in front of an audience of 100 or 200 people in our house. Uh, so we also have to think about uh, what, we are, uh, what, what we can do in, um, on other ways and digital ways. Um, and so uh, we have this uh, Zoom meetings uh, and Zoom discussions uh, with interesting guests from every from everywhere in the world, and today I'm very glad uh, to say a warm welcome to our friend. We have to say uh, Joachim Palme. Uh, he's now in uh, in Stockholm, and uh, and uh, it's wonderful to have you as our guest uh, on, on this virtual basis uh, uh, today in the evening. Thank you very much, Robert. I'm very happy that I could join you this this way and this new format. Yes. It's, it's fine to talk to talk to you again. I think it's some years ago, many years ago, some five or six years that we met. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, 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 and that's the last time that we met. And it's, we are hoping that we will see you uh, physically in reality uh, again, maybe next year or in a half a year. Uh, but now we have to uh, now we have to do that uh, on this online basis. Uh, Joachim Palme uh, for. For you, uh, you who don't know him, uh, Joachim Palme is born in 1958. He's a political scientist and also a sociologist. He is professor at the, uh, uni at the, for politics at the University of Uppsala. He's also the CEO of the Institute for Future Studies, and he has strong expertises on labor markets and also especially welfare uh, policy. He was uh, head of the Swedish uh, Welfare uh, Commission. And he has strong ties to the Kreisky Forum. Um, and um, an important reason is uh, uh, family, uh, family reasons. Uh, uh, Joachim Palme is the eldest son of the British, uh, of the Swedish Prime Minister, uh, uh, Olof Palme, who was assassinated in 1986. Uh, and uh, as many of you know, Olof Palme was a very close friend of Bruno Kreisky and of, uh, of um, also of, uh, of Willy Brandt. And uh, for that reason, uh, uh, Joachim also was as a kid in Austria uh, doing the holidays here with the Kreiskis, with the younger Kreisky, Peter Kreisky, uh, our friend um, who died uh, 10 years ago already. Uh, it's that, that Peter passed away. Uh, and uh, they went for skiing with skiing with uh, with Hannes Androsch, you told me as a kid. So uh, Joachim has also has has strong ties to our house uh, and our place where we now are not, uh, but we are only virtually there. Um, so again, uh, welcome Joachim. And um, now I would want to put forward a very simple the first question. Uh, as you know the. Swedish model was globally discussed, it also in this emotional way, because many people said, oh, we should follow the Swedish path, and the other said, no, we should not uh, follow the Swedish path, but uh, many people didn't have, don't have too much information about what was the uh, Swedish path, how would you describe it, how would you estimate it, and what is your personal opinion about the Swedish path in the, in the, in the, pandem in the pandemic? Uh, unfortunately, there, there is no uh, very simple uh, answer to that uh, that question. Um, fortunately, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if, if you allow me to to just mention that there are, there are in fact uh, many uh, both particularities and 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 also similarities. Uh, I think what what uh, has been different is, is that Sweden has not gone for a, a lockdown um, strategy. 
Um, so uh, we have uh, kept uh, schools, uh, both primary schools, kindergartens and, and secondary school, partly op open, uh, it, for the younger, uh, fully open. Um, we have uh, uh, not uh, implemented uh, uh, very strict uh, legal regulation on, on uh, how people move about in society. But uh, I should uh, emphasize that also Sweden has imposed uh, restrictions on how many people that can gather uh, uh, on, on one occasion and, and the limited is, is 50. And that, of course, is, is a, I mean, important also restriction in a democratic society and sort of is uh, restricting the I mean, fundamental democratic right to assemble uh, uh, publicly. Uh, so I think that uh, also here there are some, some uh, similarities with what other countries have done, but uh, uh, not as strict as in, in many, not as strict as in, in Austria. And I think it, when it comes to uh, the uh, decision making, there are also some particularities in, in the sense that uh, the, the role of the uh, public health uh, agency has been very important. Uh, and I think this is really not a surprise because Sweden has, uh, uh, the state structure is, is built on uh, very small ministries and then uh, independent public agencies uh, with, uh, uh, of course, instructions from, from the government, government and and they're ruled by law, uh, but they have uh, a greater independence than, than what you see in, in many other European countries, uh, maybe with the exception of, of Finland. Um, and then uh, I think the, uh, there's also a kind of uh, legal philosophical difference uh, in Sweden in the sense that our most recent legislation on, on communicable diseases uh, is built on uh, individual responsibility. Uh, so it's built on uh, that individuals take their responsibility and, and are not sort of uh, uh, only threatened by, by sort of state punishment if they don't, uh, don't follow. So it's, uh, and I think that is also linked to the way that uh, public ste or steering the public sector is, is done increasing. It's not exclusively something that is about public health, but you can see the same kind of of uh, trust-based uh, steering in, in, in other areas. So I think that 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 there there are some uh, issues here, which is about uh, about public steering as well. And then uh, uh, I think the there's been a lot of uh, discussion of you know is is there a particular Swedish uh, sort of uh, strategy also when it comes to goals of, of uh, what uh, the, both the uh, public health agency and, and um, the government is trying to do and and here here I think there's some some confusion uh, but I think the it's it's from my perspective it's clear that it's been about public health uh, but public health not only in terms of COVID but uh, in a broader perspective uh, so it's it's been about uh, contemplating uh, collateral damages uh, that can come out from very strict uh, strategies mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, it has not really been about herd immunity, which I think uh, has been one way of interpreting the, the strategy. And it's not been, not been about the economy either. Uh, so it's uh, been uh, sort of from the public health agency, uh, it's been, been, been clear. And the government has uh, by and large followed uh, the recommendation from public health agency. And you know, on the political level, there's not been, I mean, uh, at least not in the early stages, uh, a questioning of, of the, uh, the strategy that the, that the government has been pursuing. Uh, then there's been increased uh, discussion, uh, uh, more heated, this, also political discussion. But I think that's it's, it's important that early on that this there was a there appear to be a, a broad political agreement on, on this fact. Uh, this does, mean, does this mean that uh, at the beginning, at least, uh, uh, it, it was not discussed in the political sphere uh, because it was a technocratic, pragmatic, uh, uh, 
public service decided uh, strategy which is not part of the political controversy? Um, well, I think that, um, yeah, I, I think that's a fairly correct uh, description. Uh, uh, even if there, there was some sort of um, uh, uncertainty, of course, uh, part because we knew so little about the, the disease and the pandemic. Uh, but then there, there were sort of uh, kind of uh, the, the government invited the, all political parties to, to discuss and, and so on. So there, there was a political forum created uh, by the government. So it, uh, I, th I think that, that there was a political uh, decision to follow. So it's not that they had to follow the instructions from the uh, public health agency, but there was a uh, conscious political uh, decision to, to do that. Uh, if, if you have now to judge uh, the last, let's say it's three months, um, uh, now we have in Sweden, I, I, I look for the figures today, um, mm -hmm. um, 70,000 cases of COVID-19 um, and the fatality of uh, 5,300. This is a, this is a, a high, high, high figure, high, uh, a lot of uh, casualties. Yes. Um, on, on the one hand, on the other hand, you talked about, uh, um, about collateral damages uh, that maybe didn't occur. If you, if you try to balance that now, given also the situation that in May, uh, Sweden had the highest uh, per capita uh, casualties of the world. Uh, uh, do you think it was a failure or is not so sure if this, it was a mistake or failure, this, uh, this strategy? Uh, I think it's uh, been a failure, uh, clearly, uh, in terms of casualties. Um, uh, and. Uh, clear failure in, in protecting uh, the oldest, old, uh, those who are really uh, vulnerable to the disease in terms of uh, uh, losing their lives. Um, uh, but uh, I think the, the, the story is, is, of course, much more complicated uh, than that. Um, and um, I, I would say that, I mean, you said that Sweden has the highest uh, per capita. I, I don't think that's actually true, but we have uh, uh, Sweden, Belgium, and, and a few other countries are uh, um, have very high figures. So uh, the the question is, um, you know, um, could uh, there have been other decisions made uh, along the way which would have put Sweden on a, on a sort of safer path, path um, and, and without creating collateral damages and, and so on. Uh, but even uh, contemplating on, on you know, the, uh, the potential of actually uh, containing the, the spread of the disease, uh, I think th that is, uh, to me, uh, uh, still an open question. Um, I think that uh, when we compare Sweden with uh, Austria, uh, with uh, the, our Nordic neighbors, it's, it's clear that uh, the lockdown, not least in Austria, but also in the other Nordic countries, uh, was uh, successful, uh, taken, uh, um, I don't know if it was uh, entirely informed decision or if it was a bit of luck, uh, but it was taken at the point when, when there was um, um, very little spread of the disease. And uh, we see that in, in Sweden, uh, we had uh, a bigger spread of the disease from multiple sources uh, at a uh, very early phase uh, uh, of, the, of the pandemic. Uh, and when we look at, at the spread of the disease in Sweden, it's also clear that uh, there's a huge local variation, as we see in Italy. Yeah. Um, so that uh, uh, with, if Sweden would have locked down, uh, you know, uh, at the same time as, as uh, Austria and, and the Nordic countries, um, we don't know if, if it would have worked. We could have very well ended up in the Belgian situation with uh, mortality rates uh, on par with what we got, mm -hmm. uh, with the collateral damages coming from uh, locking down society and locking schools, preschools, etc. Um, 
And then there's also, uh, I mean, another issue around the, the long-term development and um, because uh, the disease is, is still there. Um, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, I think this is, uh, I think was guiding the, the Swedish decision makers that they, they wanted to impose sustainable measures that could be sustained over a long period of time, mm -hmm. calculating that it would take uh, at least one year uh, possibly more to come up with a uh, uh, reasonably effective uh, vaccine uh, so that we would have to live with measures of trying to contain the disease and control the disease uh, uh, for, for a year. So I think th this is uh, this is some in the, the kinds of, of calculations that you, you have to uh, engage in. Uh, uh, so so the, the brief answer is it's, it's been a failure. Um, uh, the more difficult question is, you know, could uh, things have been done differently? And I, I think this has to be asked uh, uh, with a historical perspective. Uh, uh, if we would have known uh, exactly what we know today, I think it would have been much easier to do the right things. But uh, given the information that we had early on this year, uh, could we have, uh, or should we have made other decisions? And I think that's that's uh, that's very important uh, thing to, to. Because also we have to uh, at the end we have to we have to can discuss it in one year because um, also if we look at the figures, we, uh, Sweden is uh, has eight million uh, people living in Sweden. Uh, it's uh, just around uh, the same like in Austria, and we have now seven hundred casualties, and you have. 5,000 ca uh, casualties. That's a lot of more, that's clear. Um, yes. On the other hand, it's not a totally catastrophic, catastrophic like we can, like we saw in, in, in Italy and the, the Swedish, the Swedish uh, the healthcare system and medical system and the, and the, um, and the emergency and in, in intensive care systems. Uh, it, it, it worked. It was not. It, it was not in, in a shape like 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 Italy. And uh, on the other hand, we also now have, have to open up and stop the lockdown. And uh, we see now already that it's a little bit difficult that uh, as we, we opened up and we, uh, we 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 went away from the lockdown. And now we have new clusters, um, and we have to. Uh, uh, to deal with it in, in the next month. Um, so the question would be also, Mike, can Sweden be not, not a model for the first three months, but uh, can we learn something from Sweden uh, to uh, deal with the pandemia uh, on a more sustainable way in the next month? I mean, uh, I think that, uh, I mean, the advantage that uh, you have uh, that made a reasonably successful lockdown in terms of uh, reducing the number of casualties from COVID-19 is that you can use uh, the experience and the increasing knowledge about the disease because there have been a number of surprises and, and continues to be surprises about the, the nature of this virus, virus and how it spreads. Um, and, and I think that I mean, in Sweden has been a increasingly intense political discussion about this. It's been a very uh, intense uh, discussion among different uh, scientists uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, public uh, figures and, and so on. Uh, very strong emotional uh, connotations around this. Um, but there's some issues that they, they uh, agree on and, and that this is that the social distancing uh, is uh, very effective and that basic hygiene is a fantastic uh, uh, tool to reduce the, the spread of, of the virus uh, and that you can achieve a lot uh, with voluntary measures uh, and that uh, you can also maintain the basic functions of society such as schools, uh, hospitals uh, without uh, uh, a massive spread of, of the virus. If you uh, follow a uh, few basic principles, so I think, and, and th this can be done uh, on a voluntary basis. We can see that, I mean, the, the, the spread of other 
diseases, communicable diseases, such as stomach flu or the seasonal flu, went down drastically uh, um, when, when the voluntary sort of distancing started uh, and uh, sort of adaptation in terms of homework for those who could, et cetera. Um, so, I, so I think that, that um, even if there's a lot of discussion in Sweden, uh, there's some things that, that uh, we have learned and I think that, that uh, can be of good use uh, when you move, want to move from a, a, this lockdown to into a more, more open. Uh, and also, I think the, the what you mentioned that you've been having these outbursts. We also have had have some outbursts in in regions that have been very little affected previously. Uh, and this also shows that the, this uh, is a disease that spreads in cluster uh, rather than evenly in society. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, I mean um, uh, we have paid a high price, uh, uh, especially the oldest old population. Um, uh, and uh, I, I hope that we can uh, learn from that to, to reduce the casualties in the future and that, that uh, others can learn from, from that too uh, in terms of finding sustainable uh, strategies. Uh, so uh, only for our audiences, how, 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 is the, uh, how many people died in the elderly care systems? Just 60% of all deaths are in the elderly care systems or 70 years or something like that. Am I right? Yeah, something like that. Um, but it's also, um, we should recognize that the, the elderly health system uh, is uh, for very, oh, very sick people. Mm -hmm. uh, my guess is that many of those will be in hospitals in, in Austria. So it's, it's really mm -hmm. old people who are, are uh, very, very sick and uh, with a very low life expectancy to start with. Um, so I, I think that that the, this should be, should be recognized uh, as well when we're because all these country comparisons are 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 made difficult by the fact that we are comparing uh, elderly care systems that have a di very different character. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but but I, I mean you you also put the, uh, I mean your finger on the what what was successful and and maybe uh, too uh, much emphasis was paid to to uh, the end intensity care. So we, we saw what was happening in Italy, tried to learn from that. And, and the uh, uh, sort of very important goal of the public health agency and, and, and for, for policymakers as well was, was to not hit the ceiling of the intensity care uh, system. And, and that was successful. So there was spare capacity uh, all, all the way. Um, Peaking, I mean, the, the uh, situation was most difficult in, in April, and then it's been coming down slowly. Now it's continuing to, to slow. The, the number of intensity care persons are 150 uh, okay. now uh, in the entire country, and, and uh, uh, casualties are, are also down to, to very low, low figures. Yeah. So the discussion in, in, in actually everywhere in the world was totally emotional and also politicized and the, emotion, yes. the emotionality is maybe easy uh, to understand because the people have, had fears and uh, they didn't know and we, we, have, we were, were facing a problem we ca could not judge. Um, mm. uh, so this might be a, a main reason for that. Um, uh, but in many countries, it was primarily the left or the liberal left uh, uh, that uh, was pro uh, lockdown and shutdown uh, and the conservative right uh, or especially the far right mm -hmm. was for freedom and we should not overestimate a flu or something like that. It's a debate like we had it in the US, mm -hmm. like we had it in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, in, in Great Britain, like we had it also in Germany. Uh, in Austria, it was a little bit difficult because of uh, uh, Sebastian Kurz being chancellor. He's not really on the left, <laughs> he's on the other mm -hmm. side. Uh, but uh, generally, it was the far right uh, who is against, uh, against the shutdown and the center and the left liberal and the left in favor of the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the shutdown. So uh, obviously in, uh, in, in, in Sweden, the debate as far there is a debate is the other way around, isn't it? 
Um, I think it's very, uh, it's a very confusing debate. Uh, that that I mean, we've seen that the, the far right in in, in the U.S. Uh, are against the state. They are they are sort of celebrating the, the the Swedish strategy because it's less sort of intrusive in in, in people's uh, uh, people's lives and so on. Um, here, uh, I would say that that um, uh, some of the uh, sort of strongest liberal voices. In, in the political sphere, the, the uh, you know chief editor of the biggest uh, Swedish new newspaper uh, early on uh, was was uh, very st strongly arguing for for lockdown. Um, we see that uh, there there are some also uh, active politicians from the liberal parties, some of them being very strongly uh, arguing for for lockdown. So it's. Um, I think the this um, the Swedish strategy has uh, sort of uh, a slightly different uh, political and and um, sort of history genealogy, uh, if you if you want to speak in those terms. Um, I, I think that uh, it's uh, uh, been guided a lot by sort of. Epidemi epidemiologists uh, and and that there has been a lot of agreement uh, not only among uh, the Swedish uh, leading epidemiologists but but also uh, they've been sort of referring to their uh, colleagues uh, um, internationally and and uh, I think the uh, the Sw Swedish state epidemiologist uh, he uh, was uh, uh, has been been uh, sort of talking about how shocked he was uh, when the what he saw as as the politicized lockdowns uh, took place, uh, not only in in, in uh, sort of uh, uh, Eastern Europe but but, but also in in uh, the neighboring countries. Uh, and to some extent, I mean, uh, uh, the lockdowns also in our neighboring countries were made against the uh, advice of of their video and modulologist. So um, I think that uh, the, there's not a clear sort of uh, liberal uh, notion about this. Um, and and when, you, when, you look, when you see the, uh, I think the medical profession has been, been very influential here, but, but also in the medical professions, there are different uh, schools of thoughts. So, so some of those who are sort of active in infectious disease uh, research, virologists, uh, have been strongly uh, advocating lockdown. So there's been a very heated uh, and emotional debate also in the medical profession. Um, and and from, from my perspective, I think, think that is, is deeply problematic that uh, they have not been able to stay away from their uh, own emotions in, in terms of uh, trying to uh, create a science-based scientific ground for, for uh, policy advice and, and policy making. So I, I think the, the, the way that, that this disease has been politicized uh, in, in not only in the political sphere, but also in, in the medical sphere is, is problematic. So we need uh, actually, I think, to, to lower the emotional level uh, and really to start to engage in, in uh, a systematic analysis and evaluation. Very difficult job, but I think it's, it's, uh, uh, it's very important, not only for the, I mean, continued combat of this disease, because, uh, but because there will be uh, another virus, another pandemic, uh, not uh, next year, but in, in five or 10 years. And oh, maybe. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, you, you, you talked at the beginning the, about the specifics of the political culture in, uh, in, in Sweden that were also very important for the different path uh, Sweden uh, made. Uh, you talked about the trust of the people and you talked about the, um, this um, value that people decide for themselves and not only commanded. And also mm -hmm. this uh, very important element of the, the Swedish political 
culture of the culture of consensus. Uh, after three three months, where maybe a lot of people think it was a failure, uh, were this is is this still intact or is there maybe a problem of the of the uh, Swedish uh, civil consensus now? Or is this still intact? Well, I, I, I would like to question your, your um, interpretation of the Swedish political uh, consensus. Uh, I, I would say that uh, I mean, uh, the, there's been a lot of controversy okay. in Swedish politics. Uh, yeah. The, the left-right divide has been, been very strong, um, very polarized. Um, uh, also, I mean, we have a very organized labor market uh, um, which uh, is, I mean, organizing I mean, very different in interests, capitalists and laborers, and, and then, then uh, but we have a, have a culture of, of um, negotiation and compromise. Uh, but these are temporary truces rather than, you know, you, you just agree on everything. Uh, and I, I think that uh, um, uh, consensus uh, is problematic uh, in, in terms of, um, uh, adapting to new situations because if you agree on everything when you enter something that is unknown uh, like the COVID virus then then you're not able to take in new information and use that to change your policies um, so I think that but then in order to be fruitful in order to, to uh, bring new insights uh, then you have to uh, be much more sort of uh, dialectical in, in the way that you discuss. You may have a idea, then then you have a contrary idea, but then you need to uh, have instruments to to uh, judge who is right and wrong. Uh, and and for this, uh, you need to have a a, a better kind of uh, climate. Uh, and uh, here, I think that there's another uh, sort of hardly forgotten but um, important. Uh, Swedish culture, which is about uh, the use of science for, for uh, policy making. So Sweden has been the most modern society uh, by many, and, and it's a modern society that has used uh, economic science, uh, social science, and medical science to, to reform institutions. Uh, and that also have a tradition of having uh, public investigations that, that are used for systematic, uh, you know, working out uh, a kind of basis, scientific basis for, for policy making. So, um, that it, because you corrected me and you did it right, mm -hmm. uh, that, that it's not, not consensus is part of the, uh, of the uh, Swedish political culture, uh, as it was maybe some decades before, but uh, is rationality an, an, an yeah. important element of the Swedish uh, political. Yeah, and, and, and I hope we, that the, this can be uh, part restored because I think it's, it's now um, a, a challenge by, by a very emotional uh, discussion. Uh, and, and I think this is, uh, I mean, I've, I've talked with uh, friends and colleagues and, and um, in, from my perspective, uh, you, what you see in the media discussion is that the those who criticize the public health agency are the most emotional. Uh, but uh, those who are, who are criticizing the, the public uh, agencies at this time also feel very attacked by the, what they see as the scientific establishment so that they don't see that there is a rational possibility to engage in, in, a, in a critique of, of, of uh, the strategies that have been pursued. So I think that uh, there is definitely room for improvement uh, uh, to make, anyway, to improve on, on, on policies and, and to prepare for next uh, pandemic. Now I want to say something to our audience uh, because we are doing this question and answer thing now, but you have the possibility also to involve in the discussion, uh, let's say in the last 20 or 15 minutes. Um, and so my colleague, Natalie Luftensteiner, um, uh, it has the possibility to give you, after uh, in some minutes, the possibility uh, to speak here also in our Zoom uh, meeting and to everybody um, who is following us on Twitter, uh, on Facebook Live, uh, you can uh, interact 
with the comments, with the commentar function, comments function. Um, uh, and uh, so maybe we have find some possibility to involve these questions too. Uh, hopefully, it, hopefully Natalie, uh, who can hear me now, uh, can do also that because it's a little bit difficult for me to switch the screens and uh, discuss with uh, uh, with um, with um, um, you are team here and uh, at the same time reading the reading the notes. Um, so uh, just uh, two two last questions from my side, and then you have the possibility uh, to to involve uh, as an audience. Uh, the last question would be the other topic because many people here who were in favor of the Swedish model and say say okay we should follow this path did it because they also saw, thought uh, it wouldn't have that economic bad uh, uh, bad results like a full shutdown that like we have we have. Uh, so if you uh, look now on the Swedish situation the as a uh, domestic demand also dropped uh, and also as a as a very highly in the in the international global market involved country also the foreign uh, um, uh, demand dropped and we all have the supply side elements of the crisis uh, mm -hmm. do you think that uh, the different path in sweden had any influence on the economic performance or is this uh, more or less everywhere the same because we are in a global economic crisis. I mean, uh, I think the, it's clear that that Sweden has been been hit uh, uh, because of our strong ex export dependency, mm -hmm. and the big big Swedish export firms have been been severely hit. Um, but uh, I, I think that. Uh, uh, is I mean something that policymakers can uh, you know not influence. This is uh, decided uh, a lot on on the global level. Uh, also, the big export firms are um, I mean are, are strong and and can weather a, a storm uh, if it's not uh, too long. Uh, maybe with the exception of of airline companies and so on. Uh, but I think the the. The greatest uncertainty is, is with, the, with the small firms, the, the restaurants, and 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 uh, of course we have not had uh, a lockdown, uh, but uh, uh, we have had a massive change in, in people's behavior uh, because of the recommendations and because of people's fears and, and so, uh, for 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 the, the sort of entire small business. Uh, Domestic demand uh, uh, sector—it's been been very uh, tough, um, and we see also that what you know what usually happens during an economic crisis is, is hitting young people hard and and uh, also immigrants, those who are the newcomers to society with the uh, these strong foothold on the labor market. So we have now um, unemployment around ten percent, uh, and uh, this is. Uh, now being you know the government is responding to this and with uh, the, the kind of supply side uh, measures that that you, you mentioned mm -hmm. to secure uh, you know have a wage uh, insurance uh, uh, policy to protect both big and, and small firms um, but um, i think the 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 question is uh, you know how fast can we pick up the domestic uh, demand and uh, because otherwise there's been, been a massive destructive force coming from from this and, and you know I, I, I do think that they because shops have been able to uh, you know be open so it's they've not been forbidden to uh, there's been some activity but but uh, it's no doubt that they've been severely affected as well I think they would have been more severely affected uh, uh, but um, it's it's uh, it's clear that, that there's an economic crisis uh, also in Sweden uh, beyond the usual Keynesian uh, um, stabilizing uh, domestic demand mm. policies, uh, did the government did any other things like uh, uh, protecting the, uh, the the businesses? Uh, they are in in our countries actually in Austria and Germany. Uh, the businesses were in fact on life uh, saving emergency measures uh, two and a half months, and now. 
it's becoming a little bit more uh, business uh, still over again, mm. but uh, now it's more or less the same like in your country. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think the, it, it's clear that the, the, the government has been spending a lot of money. Um, uh, but part has been uh, in that they have, uh, you know, been giving money for free uh, for a while. But uh, so you, firms that don't have to pay their tax uh, until later. They they can uh, get credit on uh, on a number of payments. Have been you know reductions of rents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and for some, it's been enough for some. But but. Uh, uh, there's also a lot of, of uh, critique that that's been, not been enough for many firms to, to survive, especially, you know, restaurants and small businesses with, with uh, uh, you know, uh, depending on, on the constant cash flow and, and so on. So it, when you look at, at uh, you know, go to a shopping center or to a, I mean, local um, shopping center, you see that opening hours are, have been changed uh, some, some are just closed, uh, and um, uh, so I, I, you know, uh, I think that uh, it's still an open question if if uh, the measures have been been uh, strong enough, uh, and I think the the government strategy has been to not sort of uh, throw away all the money uh, from the start, but to to uh, save uh, money for for the recovery and to help. Ha help sustain that recovery during the autumn. But uh, the, the Swedish public finances are in, in, in very, very good shape. So the, the, there is a lot of, of uh, uh, degrees of freedom to, to act. Uh, and then, I mean, interesting enough, uh, it's also changed in the political scene in the sense that, that uh, parties that usually uh, don't want to spend public money um, on the political right are, are much more um, willing to do that, uh, and um, I think that that can uh, create uh, support for a, a continued uh, more, more Keynesian uh, approach. And I, I think that the, uh, just to mention that I mean we we've gone through a couple of deep crises in Sweden, the crisis in the 1990s, mm -hmm. and the lesson from that was that we were not Keynesian enough. Mm -hmm. uh, apart because we couldn't because uh, the the foreign uh, uh, then givers uh, were too strict on us. Uh, and in the uh, Great Recession, uh, uh, we uh, actually just basically rely on the automatic stabilizers. And, and the, even the IMF criticized the government for being, the Swedish government for being too uh, little expansionary. So I think that uh, it's, it's still open if Sweden will be, uh, you know, expansionary enough uh, uh, from an economic perspective yeah. during this crisis. Uh, but it, it has the freedom to do that uh, in uh, contrast to what was uh, the case in the 1990s. Uh, the absolutely last question from my side is, uh, and it's uh, totally, uh, it's huge to, this, uh, to your last words. Uh, there's this discussion now about the European recovery uh, in the, uh, on the European mm. level, um, and you have a social democratic led uh, government with mm. green, uh, red green alliance. Uh, but uh, your government and your prime minister is uh, uh, together with uh, the Austrians, with Kurds, with Danish, uh, or the mm. Danish out now, uh, but with the Netherlands, uh, with the prime minister from the Netherlands, uh, they were the four who were uh, against. Uh, um, um, not against every help for <laughs> or not, not mm -hmm. against totally against the uh, recovery fund, but they were against the mm -hmm. German Frankfurt initiative. How how can a left wing government be uh, together with Sebastian Kurz against uh, European solidarity? Maybe not the company is so great, but uh, I mean that can still be a rational argument behind. And and I, I think that I mean from my perspective, it's. Uh, it's about um, what uh, the responsibility is for national governments. And, and from my perspective, the responsibility uh, is to tax, tax the rich and, and uh, spend on the poor, basically. 
um, and uh, if if the uh, sort of uh, some governments are, aren't doing that uh, and have not been doing that for decades, uh, you know, when are they going to take the responsibility? Um, this is not the, the the Greek situation because the Greek situation is that they were tripped into, uh, you know, um, uh, of burdening uh, their public finances by borrowing money uh, and have a uh, public indebtedness that is unsustainable and that that should be re re restructured and and, uh, and this is uh, what the IMF and World Bank are agreeing on. It's only the Germans that don't agree on that. Um, and I, I think that uh, now uh, it's not uh, entirely. I mean, it's the political opposition to this, you know, uh, spending with, uh, and not credit spending uh, uh, is not sort of only the eurozone or or outside the eurozone. But I think there's a dimension to this uh, that uh, Sweden is outside the, the eurozone. And uh, the Eurozone is a monetary union uh, that lacks uh, a fiscal union and that uh, uh, instead of just spending money, they should set up something that can deal with the asymmetries of the, this shock. Also the, uh, the Great Recession, the shock that, that was created at that time. So I think that uh, uh, this uh, is... Uh, Maybe a quick fix, uh, and uh, I, I mean, to some extent, I, I, I share the Swedish government's resistance uh, in terms of just uh, engaging in spending. Even though I agree with those who who think that there should be a European program, that if we don't help each other, uh, then we're uh, sort of onto a downward spiral. Uh, that will uh, affect the the uh, the entire uh, continent. So I, I think that there are some real issues, but I also think there are some real issues in terms of designing these policies in in a sustainable way, and not only to deal with this crisis. So thank you for that part. And uh, now I'm asking my colleague Natalie: uh, Do we have any questions? Uh, did any questions of people or any people in our Zoom meeting who wants to? Uh, to put forward their questions by themselves, or do you have any questions in the Facebook uh, postings, uh, Natalie? Uh, so far, there are no questions, but if you'd like to comment, just um, there is a hand symbol on your screen. Use it, and then I can unmute you. Nobody wants to put forward a question. We have a comment here. I didn't read it. Did you read it, uh, 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 Natalie? No. On Facebook? No, here on the in the Zoom meeting. It's a it's a longer comment, so I cannot uh, fix the question on it. Uh, so I, I read it. Sweden has a very high medical standards, a very low density of population in, Stock in Stockholm. The only major city reaching one million of population. All these factors would make us expect a very low rate of fatalities in Sweden. But Sweden has has more deaths calculated on population rate uh, on population rate uh, that than that than most countries we call catastrophic. Uh, how can you call it collateral de death, even if 60% of fatalities were aged uh, that to your opinion can be allowed to die? What about 40%? This would be 2,200 fatalities of younger persons. This is still a very high number of fatalities. Why did Sweden never try to correct the mistakes done? So the question is, uh, uh, there are high yeah. fatalities rate also within youngers uh, or not, not totally elder people. Uh, and uh, why didn't uh, this, uh, did Sweden not correct this mistake? I, th I think that when you look at the, the, the younger cohorts, I mean, up to the age of 30, there, there are, I think, a handful uh, maximum. And this is what you get uh, uh, also with uh, uh, an ordinary uh, flu. Um, and uh, this is the case even if we've had uh, 
uh, schools for up to 16 year olds uh, open uh, and uh, we have not seen higher um, deaths among teachers than uh, among other uh, sort of occupations. Uh, but what I really meant by collateral damage is that if you start to um, a lockdown, uh, then uh, we know that this is uh, affecting the uh, psychological and physical health of, of children uh, and young people. It's also increasing uh, domestic violence uh, towards children and to, towards uh, women in particular. Uh, and uh, if we uh, have a lockdown, meaning that you close preschools and schools, then you will also uh, potentially drain uh, the hospital sector for, for, for old uh, elderly care homes uh, and people who are depending on, depending on the need of others for their survival. So uh, the collateral damage is, is uh, when it comes to uh, health problems and, and even death uh, as a consequence of measures that you take in order to contain the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, spread. So uh, when it comes to then the spread in, in, in the Stockholm area, it's clear that uh, this came uh, from different sources. It came from Italy, from Austria. Mm -hmm. It came from uh, the UK. It came from uh, the US. Uh, also signs from, from um, uh, Iran. Uh, and uh, uh, there were uh, also particular uh, nationalities uh, uh, affected such as the Somali population in Stockholm and the Syrians. Uh, so I think the, uh, the difficulty then for the, for the public health authorities was that you know, once you move to a very complex origin of the disease, it's very difficult to trace and, and uh, uh, control the disease. So that's why they changed in from a, you know, uh, tracing the disease and, and the sources into a another strategy. Whether that was right or, or wrong, I, I don't know, but it, uh, uh, in combination with keeping uh, uh, the hospital sector open, uh, at least meant that uh, we could give uh, the population um, uh, intensive care and, and the survival in the intensive care has been uh, reasonably high, uh, even if it has demanded very long periods of, of treatment compared to uh, other uh, kinds of diseases. Um, then the question is, it, what was, uh, and this is uh, being debated, was uh, the fact that we could uh, maintain spare capacity in the intensive care sector, was, was that at the expense of not giving access to elderly people to intensive care? And there have been uh, cases uh, where people have uh, uh, first been denied and then given access to the intensive care and, and have been surviving that. But it's also the, uh, the case that many of those who are in uh, the special elderly care homes are uh, multiple, uh, have multiple uh, diseases and uh, even the transportation from the, these facilities to intensive care is a maybe a life-threatening operation. So I, I think that uh, uh, also here, there, there uh, might be things to learn, uh, but I, I, can, I hope at least that uh, uh, this made the, the issue of, of what I was meaning with, with collateral, collateral damages uh, uh, a bit more clear. Gertrud, uh, uh, our General Secretary, um, she also has uh, put forward a question, uh, but maybe Gertrud, do you want to, um, to put it forward by yourself? Uh, Uh, is I think we just read it out loud. Okay, Do you, are you doing it? Yes, um, okay. she has a question which regards the pandemic as a consequence of the dark side of the globalization and a certain deglobalization and back to the nation state. Yeah, I, mean, I think that, that that's a good question. Um, and, and of course, we've had these uh, pandemics uh, for a very, very long time, very well before the, 
um, sort of real, real globalization took, uh, took place. Uh, so we have the Hong Kong disease and uh, the flu on, and the Asian flu in the 50s. Uh, and we have the Spanish flu, and that's uh, 100 years ago. Um, and we have the plague. Um, so um, I, I think the, it's clear that, that these uh, diseases uh, travel. Um, and, uh, but they have traveled for, I mean, for a thousand years. Um, and they will continue to travel. And it's, I think some of the reactions of blocking borders have, uh, I mean, the epidemiologists uh, mostly agree that they, these uh, measures are ineffective. Um, but it also depends on what kind of disease it, it is. Uh, COVID seemed to be uh, spreading when, when you have uh, very close contact to people, mostly. Uh, and it's not like measles, which is spreading much more um, easily. Um, and, and then it's, uh, I mean, the real... Uh, difficulties is when you sort of get in when you not when you travel to somewhere else but when you come home from from, from abroad and bring in, in, in disease but I think that that it's also clear that uh, it's a issue of, of uh, the origin of these uh, virus uh, explosions uh, are are in Asia where where uh, the animals and, and people live very close to, together when you get these transmissions of, of uh, things that communicate first from animals to humans and then between humans. Uh, and that this is perhaps something uh, that uh, we need to deal with, uh, with uh, global political measure uh, jointly with, with uh, China, the other countries in Asia. So in that, uh, that sense, I think that the so sort of global spread is inevitable. Uh, and uh, I can only hope that we, we can uh, collaborate jointly in, instead of uh, imagining that we can lock ourselves in. This may be possible at least for some time with islands, but uh, even uh, they need to really um, have a long-term strategy to, to deal with uh, the spread of this and other viruses. Uh, thank you, Joachim. Uh, I think these were all the two questions we had now in this uh, in this chat here, and obviously we didn't have any more in uh, in Facebook Live. Uh, thank you for and now with exactly one hour, and this was our plan uh, to ta talk for one hour about the Swedish model, about the Swedish dilemmas, uh, about our projections, about uh, what's happening in Sweden, uh, and also about the economic situation at the end. Um, Thank you very much uh, uh, for this conversation, Joachim. It was a pleasure again, and I'm sure we will meet very soon physically. I hope so. Yeah. 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 If, if uh, you allow, I will allow Swedes uh, coming to watch you again. <laughs> we have some okay. uh, restrictions uh, today, but I hope that will change in the future. Yes, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> if Sweden, people from Sweden cannot even come into the country in the moment. Yes, for right. sure. Uh, but this will change, I'm sure, uh, in the next, we, next we half hope. year. And in half year, I think, uh, half a year, we have the 110th birthday of Prono Prize, I think, or something like that. Yeah. So maybe there are some occasions uh, which uh, which are very good to meet again in the Prono Prize Forum. And um, have a good summer until that. And stay, hey, you. Uh, stay healthy. Uh, you, you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yes. you. Thank uh, you, Robert. Robert. Thank you. Have a nice time. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.